All of our guests today, thankfully, though, are in person, and it is my pleasure to introduce to you Mark Pattison, who I had the, uh, the, the joy of playing golf with today. Had a great time on the golf course. Uh, Mark went to college at the University of Washington. He was an Oakland Raider. He was a New Orleans Saint. But here's what I would tell you about Mark Pattison. I think you have found an interesting person when playing in the NFL is at least, or at best, the second most interesting thing they've done in their life. Mark. Great to see you, man. What a fun time. How you doing? Hey, you know, you're a stick, too. You you put it up. You put it out. You can play. It was a fun day today. If I, yeah. could, if I could putt better, uh, his, if his. we could all putt better, then, you know, golf would be a whole lot I'm easier. I'm your putter. You, you drain some big ones. <laughs> his, his ego is gigantic enough. Please do not make it any worse by telling me he's a good golfer. The, the truth is I hit it better today than I have in a long time. That's good. So I, I, felt, good. I felt good about it. We had a great time. That's that delta humidity keeps the ball down for you. It was a little warm. Yeah. You know, it's not a big deal, and I, I got to tell you what, too. Like back in the day when I got traded from the Raiders to the Saints in that first practice, and I'd never dealt with humidity. I had my helmet on, my shoulder pads, and receivers. You know, you go down 40 yards, you come back, you go down, it's back and forth, back and forth. I thought my head was going to melt. Bobby A. Haber was the quarterback. I just said, <laughs> dude, time out. I got to. I just got to take a moment. Pour some water on. I top got of pour the some head. water. Yeah, I had to learn how to understand and how to deal with that. So, Mark, where where we live, college football is huge. Obviously, yeah. uh, two SEC teams, Southern Miss uh, here in the state of Mississippi, and and that's a really big deal. When you think back on your time at the University of Washington, you yeah. played for Don James, yeah. one, of, one of the all-time greats. Um, what stands out for you about your Washington football career? You know, it, I, I think it really paved my way because I didn't understand how to work for things. And this has followed me on these different career paths I've chosen over time. Um, he introduced uh, John Wooden's Pyramid of Success. Yeah. And it's really this blueprint of how to go about doing certain things. Consistency, discipline, going at it with tenacity. You know, all these, there's actually 25 different pillars. And, and back in those days, it was getting bigger, stronger, faster, doing well in the classroom, understanding how you get to that ultimate championship. For us, it was the Rose Bowl. My senior year, we actually we went a step higher, and we put our, our goal to win the national championship. We ended up coming in number two. We beat Oklahoma in the Orange Bowl, and that was when they, they uh, gave BYU a beat a 6-6 six and six Michigan team in the Holiday Bowl on the 25th <laughs> of December. So that really opened up the whole BCS thing, yeah. right, and wh where it is You today. were a trailblazer. Well, we were. I mean, you didn't know it at the time, but, you know, there was so much discussion about they were playing in the, the Big Sky or Mountain West or whatever conference of WAC, I think, actually mm -hmm. it was. And here they are playing, you know, Wyoming and Boise State and teams like that. And, and that was Ty Detmer, right? No. Oh, oh yeah, we're talking pre, pre Robbie Detmer. Bosco, I think. It might have been Robbie Bosco, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I think it was. And, and so when you go back there, you know, and we're playing, obviously, in the back Pac-12. We're playing USC, UCLA, Stanford. Sure. And then, you know, you mix in some. I think we played Michigan in the big house that year. We played Northwestern. We played some other teams, Houston. You know, we were playing big-time football, and it just was different. And so the whole argument, like, how can these guys be number one? And, you know, when I went off to the combines later a couple months uh, after the Orange Bowl, I just remember a lot of those guys wishing that we would have been co-champions because there was so much smack and, you know, about, <laughs> you know, should they even be there. So they didn't feel like they, they earned it the right way. Um, you, you have an NFL career, and, and we can talk briefly about that. I just don't want to run out of time on this because I'm so fascinated right. with what you have done in kind of the second or third chapter of your life. Well, let's, let's get off the football thing. I mean, all right. it's all good. All I, right. You know, and, and that's, you know, somebody told me recently this, like, this is why the, your, your, your windshield is so big and your, your you know, rear view mirror is so small. Okay. It's because, like what, and then it, right? And yeah. it's really true. It's just like, for me, that's been my whole thing. It's like, what is next? It doesn't really matter what I've done in the past. Work at Sports Illustrated. We'll set that aside for a yeah. second as well. You have summited Mount Everest. But yeah. not only Mount Everest, you have conquered all seven summits, the tallest peak on all seven continents. How in the heck do you go from NFL wide receiver to, you know what, I want to climb mountains and accomplish something that just a really finite number of people that are alive today have done? Well, and, and really that goal, if you if you go down a level, it was, you know, I was going through a rough patch in my life. You know, this is 10 years plus ago, and it was just like I need something massive. And we call that a BHAG, a big, hairy, audacious goal, right? And that's just something that's so, like, you're going to the moon or something. Yeah. And, and for me, that's what it was. You know, I didn't, even though I grew up in the Northwest and there's mountains up there, um, I, you know, I didn't know anything about big-time, high-altitude mountaineering. 
And so I had to go just like, you know, with the NFL, you don't go from Little League to the NFL in one jump. You have to go through this progression. And so I climbed to move to Sun Valley, Idaho. You know, we live at 6,000 feet, and, you know, there's a lot of mountains there. I climb, I train, I go, I do, and I came back. And so I thought this whole thing would take me seven years. It took me 10 years to complete. COVID got in the way. Um, I failed on on, uh, Denali, which is up in Alaska. But, you know, the whole idea about going out, setting these massive goals, and at the time it was to become the first NFL player to ever climb the seven summits. And, you know, two years ago, 2021, that happened. Will there be another NFL player that summits all seven? You know, it's just like right now, like one of the if you if you go to Europe, for example, the highest peak in Europe is in Russia. Okay. Right. And Europe, Russia is shut down, at least for Americans. Sure. And so, you know, so, so there's some logistical issues in pulling it off. There is. And so, so, so you got physical, you got mental and you've got the logistical piece as well. Yeah. And there, some good luck. The, yeah. And then there's a lot of good luck and weather and mother nature and everything else. I mean, this year alone, on Mount Everest, 17 people died, you know. And usually they have about five, and, you know, you don't want that to be your number. Uh, in 2019, I was down in Antarctica, and my tent mate at the time, a guy named Don Cash from uh, Salt Lake City, you know, good guy, but not passionate about mountaineering, and he was just really doing this to check the box. Yeah. Um, so I, we had finished that mountain. It's called Mount Vincent down in Antarctica in January, and then a couple months later, he went off to Nepal to climb Mount Everest. And, you know, he climbed to the very top, got got up there, raised his hand, fell over, died. When I went up there in 2021, I literally stepped over the guy. Oh, wow. So they just leave dead bodies up there. It's too yeah. dangerous to try to get these people yeah. off the off the top. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Um, when you set a goal, like, I want to go climb the, the seven tallest summits on Earth, yeah. the, the tallest on each continent, and you accomplish it, and that was one of those big, hairy, audacious goals you're talking about, yeah. And then you finish it. What's left after that? Huh. Well, I continue to climb. You know, last year, since I've done this, you know, I, I've climbed Cotopaxi, which is a volcano right. in, in Ecuador. Um, last year, I went to do the Matterhorn, which is, this is iconic. You know, you go to Disneyland and they have the Matterhorn, right? And so this is the real thing. And it is intimidating. I got up there right to the base, and it was blown 75 miles per hour. It just snowed, so there's ice, and you're, you know, you're climbing up, you know, straight up these rocks with your with your bare fingers. And and there's a guy that had that right at the base there that had guided over 200 times. I said, what are the chances I can make it because I want to do this? And he goes, you will die. And I said, okay, I'm out. <laughs> so <laughs> I retreated and went down to Chamonix, France, and okay. climbed Mount Blanc, which is almost 16,000 feet and pretty intense itself. So I'm going back in August to do that mountain. So, you know, so I keep trying to put these challenges and these goals out there. I've got a book in the works last year. The NFL is very blessed. I was telling you this on the golf course. I was very blessed that the um, NFL decided to document that Everest journey. Um, it's called Searching for the Summit. I ended up winning a Best Picture uh, Emmy Award for that. And so, you know. Which you told me was a little surreal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it was. I mean, it's just like sometimes when you – and let me tell you something else. So my daughter has epilepsy, right? Okay. And so when – when about this is i don't know the f- the fourth year or so when i got through this so now it's like 2017 or so and what i understood is that that there was a bigger purpose for me cuz i was getting starting to get a lot of attention from the nfl and so what happened is i started um working with these different uh foundations and charities to redirect that spotlight on these other places that i could raise so i raised about $150,000 to go towards epilepsy and help my daughter and others, you know, get healed. So that's been the really cool blessing out of this whole thing. And so when you say surreal, it's the blessing of helping others. It's the blessing of being up in front. It's the blessing of this film. A lot of it's about the epilepsy and my daughter being healed and about my why and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of things in there. 30 seconds left. Your relationship.